This is the NICE procedure for severe diverticulitis, uh, natural orifice intracorporeal anastomosis with extraction. In this procedure, we're going to see a technique that we're using a bit more and more for patients in which we have suspected or proven uh, COVID uh, that uh, require surgery. We want to minimize potential of aerosolization of the pneumoperitoneum during the extraction process. Here, we're taking down the disease from the left pelvic side wall and the dome of the bladder. We see the disease right there. And now we're ready to begin uh, the resection itself. That's the rectum down there. And we have dissected. We've already taken down the splenic flexure that we're not going to show here. But there's the left colon and there's the sigmoid. That's where we're using for our proximal transection. We use the vessel seal extend. Nice, smooth division over there. Now we're going to take down the mesentery. We'd like to stay close to the bowel, a mesenteric sparing technique. Um, we keep the superior rectal artery intact. We avoid the retroperitoneum. Now we're down to our distal level of transection. We're dividing across the rectum. This is closer to the mid-rectum. Nice, smooth division using the vessel seal extend. And we are now getting ready to uh, extract the specimen. So here is the glove technique that we use in order to, again, mitigate uh, aerosolization of the pneumoperitoneum uh, into, the, uh, into the atmosphere in the operating room. So there's an orthopedic glove that we attach to the rim of the Alexis. That's a small Alexis. There you see us putting in the anvil, and that's our nice back table. So we introduce the Alexis like we always do. We grab it with the coca retractor. We gently put the rim in through the rectal cuff. And, but you see down below in the picture that we have the glove intact as we're doing this, and it's going to grab any of the pneumoperitoneum that's trying to release through the rectum. Here we do the pull and push technique. We get the Alexis in there, and we see the glove fully expanded now, showing the uh, pneumoperitoneum. Uh, pneumo, uh, there we're pushing in the uh, anvil in preparation for our anastomosis. Here we're going to extract the specimen, but in so many of the cases with the bulky disease, we need to thin it. We grab it through the rectum. You see the glove there on the ring forceps. Here we're grabbing it through the assist port for traction, counter traction. And using a monopolar scissor, you're readily able to shave off the mesentery from the undersurface of the bowel. Of course, this would only be in benign cases. We're not going to shave the mesentery on a malignancy. But here with the traction counter traction and gentle pulling, the specimen's able to come out readily without any tearing. We see uh, the specimen staying in the glove as we're extracting uh, the various pieces coming out here. We keep it in the glove. We keep, again, mitigating a uh, significant release of aerosolized particles. Um, and here we're taking out a third or fourth piece. So once we do that, we see the glove now fully expanded. It's time to take the Alexis retractor out. We do that by inverting one of the fingers with the coker on it. You want to be careful not to rip the glove. We grab the edge of the Alexis and we gently pull it out, including the specimen. Everything comes out with the Alexis, the glove. Here we're digging into the glove to take out the portions of the specimen. That was the mesentery. This is the colon over there. And I think we have two or three other pieces that we're going to uh, take out, make sure nothing is left inside the abdomen. There's the specimen. And there is the glove technique. So now we're getting ready to do the nice portions of the procedure with the intracorporeal anastomosis. We use a 3-0 V-lock suture. That's what we've become accustomed to using. We loop it to itself. It takes about six in and out bites on the left colon. And we're, in this case, using the 31 millimeter stapler. That's the anvil. We secure it in place. And then we pretty much always use an endolope, endo loop. It's pretty easy to, for the bedside assist to help with that really gets that tissue in very tightly, especially with diverticular disease. We don't want any of those little diverticula in the way that really gets it engaged across the uh, anvil. Now we go down to the rectal cuff. This is going to take about seven or eight in and out dolphin style sutures using the 3 v lock going in and out. We loop it to itself, typically with the rectum, especially if it's thicker. Um, we're going to do this two or three times. It's very difficult to put an endo loop that low uh, unless you have a very seasoned uh, bedside assist. So there we're getting it tight, and now we're preparing for our anastomosis. We put the uh, anvil, we engage it to the spike, and we're going to close it down. We gently lift on the sutures there to keep everything tight, and there is our colorectal anastomosis. We always 
evaluate the anastomosis very closely. We have the opportunity to put interrupted over sewing sutures if we see any areas of weakness. We're then going to do direct visualization and we're going to do an ICG, fluorescence imaging, make sure everything looks viable. Once we do that, we're now just going to check the anastomosis. Direct visualization, you see the tip of the proctoscope there. Then, of course, the air insufflation test. So this is an illustration of some of the mitigating uh, procedures we're doing when we have suspicion of COVID-19 using the glove technique.